confirm is what, uh, what we have suspected was going on, that the 1st Marine Division, the expeditionary force, on the eastern side of the border between Kuwait and Iraq has now crossed over the Iraqi frontier. And so in this respect, this is the huge expeditionary force led by the Marines, largely consisting of Marines, on the right side. If you look at a map going up north from Kuwait to Iraq, it's on the right or eastern side. The army goes over on the western side, but that Marine expeditionary force has now crossed over the border into Iraq. So it is now a full-scale invasion. The Marines go in with all kinds of equipment, but mostly, as you will have heard, Mike, traveling in a light armored vehicle, the Marine infantry uh, going in. They will have had uh, snipes. Here he is again. They're trying to get as far north as they can before the moon gets too bright. Are you up, Mike? Are you up? Uh, okay, you can see the lights. We're still in the lane. Okay. Okay, we know this is now 6.15 GMT time. We know approximately 12 hours ago, some of you, okay, that's a berm. We're through the berm, through the other berm. We did have a report that an estimated 30 Iraqis surrendered at the border about 11 hours ago to one of the reconnaissance patrols as they were making their way and scouting the border. Okay, we're going up to the top of the next berm. Okay. Okay. He, get it, Mike. he keeps using the word berm. There are berms, big sand and dirt berms built on the border in the demilitarized zone, and there are trenches on the other side of them, on the Iraqi side. There was some concern about whether or not they'd have oil in them. But he's in a tracked vehicle. He's probably in a light armored vehicle on tracks with the Marines, six or seven other guys on board as well, in their full chemical and biological suits, which is just impossible on the inside of a vehicle. And you heard him there say, let's get up on top of the other berm. So they're well inside, well, well inside. They're certainly several hundred yards across the border already. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can anybody hear me? Yes, Mike, we hear you. Now, that you, that you could see is an... Uh, let's go back to that picture if we again, again, please. That's one of the armed um, bulldozers, which the Marines are taking with them. The U.S. Army has them as well. Uh, this says U.S. Army Engineering Unit. It could be the Marines. It could be the Army. But these are these huge berms, and the idea is to bust through them as quickly as they can. They're armored, um, not immune to opposition. And here's a multiple rocket launcher, which is moving forward. And no, I believe that's a part of a bridging equipment. Uh, which is going forward to breach the sand berms and some of the ditches on the other side. And, uh, well, yes, it isn't quite as easy as that, but that, uh, that is de facto exactly what it happens. And that, of course, is the purpose intended to open up these berms um, and allow the tanks and the Bradley fighting vehicles and the others to get through. Now, they're not all. We're a little, maybe a little... Um, grand with our map here. This is in a very limited place on the eastern side of the border now if he is with Marines. Tony Cordesman, you can help us with this. Um, this is a very intense engagement to get through these berms on the other side of the border. It really is, Peter. If we look at where we are, we're headed up through these areas here, and we are going to be driving. We're not sure exactly where, but we not only have berms, we have water barriers in these areas, these are the areas where the oil fields are concentrated if they burn them, and there are probably mines. We also have the risk of artillery and missiles, so it's a very difficult operation, even though what's striking about it is there's only one Iraqi division in this area, the 51st, and there are none of the Republican Guards units anywhere near here. The only other two divisions are far to the north, so we're not going to engage the Iraqi main forces for some time. Thanks, Tony. But it's very intense there on the ground at the, uh, the Kuwaiti-Iraq front. I don't know if we can bring these pictures back up again. And these were a very, well, that's Baghdad, actually, a very intense experience for young Marines and farther to the west across the frontier, young soldiers as they bust through um, these berms. 
Uh, John Hillens, one of our defense analysis, is with us. He's a former U.S. Special Operations Officer, went through this in the Gulf. John, can you hear me? I can, Peter. This but like a, a pitcher getting out there and whistling that first pitch over the catcher's head. He's got all that energy pent up. Uh, people uh, are going to have a great deal of anxiety. Uh, the minefields will add to the complexity. So commanders need to be very careful about uh, making sure people keep moving. That will uh, allay some of the anxiety and let everybody uh, really focus on the key objectives, which are much further forward of the troops than where they are right now. General Jolwin, would you like to give us uh, some sense of, of, uh, of the opening gun in terms of the big mass part of this operation? Because when other people have talked to us about it, either in the theater or in Washington, they all talk about confusion or the potential for confusion. Well, I, I think it's, a, again, one of timing and synchronization. Uh, I personally don't like the term shock and awe, but I think you're going to see uh, at some point here a, a, a massive display of air and cruise missiles at, at selected targets all over uh, Iraq. And, uh, uh, however, that does not, to me, uh, preclude the sort of ground operation we're seeing. So uh, I, for one, uh, really concur with what's happening now in the South. But uh, I think if we're waiting around for some uh, big demonstration of, uh, of air and missile power, it will come. Uh, but the timing of that may be some, some time off. Okie dokie. We're also joined this afternoon by Fawaz Jujess, who's a professor of international affairs and Middle Eastern studies at Sarah Lawrence College and an ABC News consultant. Fawaz, you've been sitting listening to this for a while. Try to put your mind, try to put yourself inside the mind of the Iraqi citizens tonight. Well, I think they are in a state of shock, but they are not surprised. I mean, this war has been in the making for the last, you know, six or seven months. But let me, let me make one point very clear. Uh, there will be a fight for Baghdad. That is, uh, and even, even if the uh, American attacks uh, tend to succeed and kill one or two or three various leaders, there are some major, I mean, uh, human resources in Baghdad. About 10,000 strong Ba'athist forces who are very loyal to the regime. There are about 30 or 40 or even 50,000 special Republican guards, and they have been positioning themselves for the last few months. So in this particular sense, there will be a fight. How stiff, how prolonged, how powerful this particular resistance remains to be seen. But it's really this particular campaign, it's in the early stages, and the, uh, I mean, more to come is really what matters at this particular stage. Uh, and, and take, if you would, just for a second, and then we're going to break and come right back, take, put yourself in the minds of the leadership at the moment on the other end of this psychological campaign. Well, uh, Peter, as you know, American strategy for the last few months has been to exert considerable psychological and military pressure on the Iraqi leadership to either really force it to leave Iraq or even to kill some of the senior leadership. So in this particular sense, I think the leadership is psychologically prepared. But now, of course, I mean, now when the, uh, the, the war itself has uh, uh, begun, it's a different situation. And I'm sure many of the senior leadership who are not very loyal to Saddam Hussein are beginning to ask the big question, mm. shall we fight for Iraq or shall we fight mm -hmm. for Saddam Hussein? And I think the United States is not making the American campaign by focusing on the uh, key leadership is not making this, is not making uh, the situation very uh, easy mm. for Saddam Hussein. For us, thanks very much. Don't go away. This is ABC News continuing live coverage of war with Iraq. I'm Peter Jennings at ABC News headquarters, along with the almost the entire ABC News team all the time, both here and in the, in the theater of war, which is changing as we go along. Um, we have not, as best we can tell, seen the huge offensive that uh, is still anticipated, but U.S. forces, Marines and Army have already crossed the Iraqi frontier in the south, and there have been several significant attacks as far as we can tell.